Lou, uh, the Minister of Small Businesses obviously saying they salute President Jacob Zuma, but this is the next move. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the next president of the ANC, uh, 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 Mr. Ramaphosa. Oh, let's see. Uh, here comes um, uh, Minister of Police, of Figilam Balula. Uh, Razmataz, we, we know you can't say much. Uh, you, you must go in. But obviously, very big day for the African National Congress today. Yes, very big day indeed, and for the African National Congress and the country. Uh, president Zuma is a resigned and we've got a new president uh, indeed uh, the impasse is over now we're looking forward to get down and work all right so thank you very much thank you very much the, uh, even Natasha there you guys have it uh, clearly the the, 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 the the last bit of guys are still trying to make their way into the National Assembly uh, I think I'm going to cross back to you in studio and I'm sure we're going to speak a little bit later you know, before I let you go, I know you're very busy and you're going to be all over the place, but there was some picketing going on and some celebrating, celebrating going on outside Parliament between lunchtime one and two a short while ago. Did you see any, anything of that or did the NGOs not pitch up? No, yeah, but I can actually still hear them. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, we are ready. I, I'm not sure. I think the, from where I'm standing, uh, it looks like uh, people dressed in ANC uh, uh, T-shirts, uh, but I can hear them saying, we are ready, we are ready. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite busy here, uh, Eben, but I think uh, uh, things are starting to move in the National Assembly. So over to you guys in studio. Thanks, Lucanio. Let's go straight into the National Assembly. Things are underway there that the vacancies which occur in the National Assembly owing to the resignation of Ms. No Nokause, Ms. M. O. Nokause Mukause and Mr. M. S. Mbata have been filled by the nominations of Ms. Sonyana with effect from the 1st January 2018 and Ms. Nolu Chungu with effect from the 5th January 2018. The members have taken the oath in the Deputy Speaker's office and I welcome the honorable members as members of the National Assembly. Order. Honourable Members, I also wish to announce that I have received the resignation letter from the President of the Republic. <laughs> Honourable Members, the letter will be published in the ATC. Uh, the House will now proceed to the election of the new President of the Republic of South Africa. The Constitution Honorable requires Speaker. the Chief Justice Honorable to Speaker. preside over the election. Honorable Speaker. I now invite Honorable the Chief Speaker. Justice to... No, you're out of okay. order, Speaker. Speaker. You're out of order. No, 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 no. You are starting on a wrong footing, Speaker. Speaker. On a point of order, Speaker. You can't call Chief Justice when there is a person on the floor. You are what setting up Chief Justice for failure. Please. Order, honorable members. When the speaker was on the floor, no one else could be on the floor. But to raise to... Honorable members. To call for your attention. Section 50 of the Constitution. Call for your attention, speaker. Honourable Member, I'm talking. But we're calling for your Can attention. Can you allow me to finish talking? And please not Section 50 that. of the Constitution permits. Uh, we've lost that feed. That the we'll try and get those pictures back for you already, but uh, uh, already the EFF uh, making making uh, a noise in Parliament trying to get the Speaker's attention. Yeah. Uh, they have tabled a motion which they want uh, the Speaker to heed before she gets into the order of business for today. Yeah, let's get straight back into Parliament. I'm aware that such a motion has been submitted, but it is not on the order paper for discussion today. Members will be aware that these matters are discussed in the program committee which met today and yesterday. 
Rather, the Chief Justice has convened the sitting today for the purposes of electing the President. In the light of this, I must accordingly order that we proceed with the business of the day as it appears on the order paper. Speaker, Honorable Speaker, well, yes, well, Honorable Shibamu. Please, uh, want to, to beg your indulgence. You are preempting things that were not rising here to raise. You have indicated that Mr. Jacob Zuma has resigned and we're making a proposal that as political parties, we should be given a minute or two to respond to his resignation, to make remarks that we note his resignation so that all of us here in Parliament express a statement in terms of what has happened. So that is the proposal that we had made, but because you had preempted us, you thought we were going to raise the issue that you have responded to now. That is the second part of what we are going to deal with. Now we are dealing with the issue of the resignation. May we please be allowed to respond to that? Honorable Shibambu, this morning you were represented in the Joint Programme Committee. You were also represented in yesterday afternoon's National Assembly Pro Programme Committee. Those matters were not raised by your representatives. And so it has been agreed in the structures of, of the Joint Programme Committee and the National Assembly Programme Committee. And today's business is about the election of the President. And therefore, honorable members, I now But proceed. Speaker, when we raise our hands orderly, you don't recognize us. And the next thing when we stand up to speak here, you're going to be complaining. We are raising our red. Wait, Lindy, we know you are singing for Sapa. Wait, man. Please, Speaker. Honorable Malema. Ramaphosa has recognized you a long time ago. Don't worry. <laughs> Speaker, we think that we are not in a correct position to elect a, 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 the president. Because constitutional court has made certain findings against this parliament. And therefore, an illegitimate parliament which has violated the constitution and did not execute its responsibilities cannot be the one that elects amongst itself a person who is accused of the same things. Because when the constitutional court says we failed as parliament to execute our responsibility, they include all of us here. And therefore, no one should emerge from amongst us to stand for position of a, a president. We strongly feel that we must dissolve the fifth parliament, then go to the elections. And if Honorable people are Malema, not scared, you are out of order. if people are not scared, let's go to the elections. The I've already ruled let's not on make that some elite packed arrangement here. Honorable Malema, Let the masses of South Africa seat. choose their president and not some elite which meets here Honorable and Malema. choose president amongst themselves. Honorable, Honorable Malema, Speaker, take your seat. If, we ins if you insist on proceeding with the election of the president, you are engaged in an unconstitutional process which will be later challenged. This one was a oh, oh, this one's. Honorable they were doing Malema, the same thing when we were telling them about Honorable this Honorable Malema, one. I've asked you again and it. again to take your seat. As I've said, Madam Speaker. that issue must be raised in the form of a properly constituted motion. And I'm not allowing members to abuse this sitting. I'm really pleading with you, Honorable Gadi, please take your seat. Madam Speaker, on a different matter, you will recall that the Chief Whip stood up and requested that KTC demands that each leader of a political party respond to the announcement that we have made of a resignation. Secondly, the resignation letter is not published in the ATC. We request at least a take, it was not there in the morning, can you read it for us, Madam Speaker? Because we don't trust that man at all. We can't even trust him in his, in his grave, that one. So just read for us Honorable that letter. Gadi, the Honorable, letter. Honorable Gadi, there's still going to be a debate 
you will be able to express yourself as broadly as possible on major issues that you want to express about the resignation and the seating and the cho choice of a new president. Speaker. I really Speaker, order. appeal to you, honorable members. Speaker, even to, on the, this morning, I even ask you, which, where is the letter from Zuma? I announced that we have received the no, letter. No, no, Speaker, because now it, it must be on record. ADC. Can we see the letter? Can you read the letter to us and to the nation? We want to see the letter, Speaker, and give each and every political party to speak on that letter, Speaker. Don't rush things. Honorable Shengiwe Mkalipi, please cooperate with the chair. Please, speaker. honorable members of speaker. the EFF, cooperate with the chair. We just want to put it on record, Speaker that we cannot be part of an illegitimate, illegal process. And Mr. Ramaphosa, things like Lindiwe Zulu, if you listen to them, you must ask the one who came before you. He listens to ill advice from illiterates, like things like this. Kambani, yes. you may call us illiterate Pumani. Yes. Mabaham Bevele. And they call me illiterate when they are the ones who are illiterate. Ah, so I don't know. I was a proud member. Tula Lindue Tula. Bye, Ginger. Lindy, we actually the conference. Tula. Yeah, go by minister. Tula. Madam Speaker. Yes, Honourable Stenazen. Madam Speaker, thank you very much, and I appreciate the uh, undertaking you've given regard to the Section 50 notice. You'll be aware that that motion is before your office in the name of a member of my party, and we uh, trust that the undertakings that you've given here today to raise that matter above the line of the, by the programming committee next Thursday uh, will be heeded. It is a constitutional motion and it must be afforded due preference. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Stenazen. I note what you have said. Now, Honorable Members, the House will now proceed to the election of the new President of the Republic of South Africa. The Constitution requires the Chief Justice to preside over the election. I now invite the Chief Justice to take the chair. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Let me begin by reiterating that the purpose of this sitting is to elect the President of the Republic of South Africa as envisaged by Section 86 of the Constitution. It is necessary to make sure that there is no lapse and that nobody is left with any doubt in relation to compliance with the prescripts of the Constitution, and I therefore begin by reading Section 86 of the Constitution. It reads, at its first sitting after its election, and whenever necessary to fill a vacancy, the National Assembly must elect a woman or a man from among its members to be the president, the Chief Justice must preside over the election of the President or designate another judge to do so. The procedure set out in Part A of Schedule 3 applies to the election of the President. An election to fill a vacancy in the office of President must be held at a time and on a date determined 
by the Chief Justice, but no more than 30 days after the vacancy occurs. Now, I suppose it's enough for me to give an assurance that I have seen the letter written by the President, duly signed, to the effect that he's resigning with immediate effect. But maybe let me read it out. Dear Madam Speaker, it's dated the 14th of February, 2018. Resigning from resigning the office of President of the Republic of South Africa. This serves to inform you that I have tendered my resignation as the President of the Republic of South Africa as per the attached Presidential Act. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, all members of Parliament and the public at large, for giving me an opportunity to lead this country from 2009. Yours sincerely, Mr. Jacob Gedeslegi Sazuma, President of the Republic of South Africa, and it is signed. And as for the Presidential Act, it's entitled Presidential Act Number 24. I, Jacob Gedeslegi Sazuma, hereby resign as President of the Republic of South Africa with immediate effect. This decision will be communicated to the Speaker of the National Assembly. This decision is recorded in terms of Section 101, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, given under my hand at Pretoria on this, the 14th day of February, 2018, President, and then it is signed. I also confirm that I received notification to this effect, duly signed by the Speaker, and in response, I say, send a letter to her, a communication titled Election of the President of the Republic, and it reads, in order to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of President J.G. Zuma and acting in terms of Section 86.3 of the Constitution, I have determined that Thursday, 15 February 2018, and 1400 hours will be the date and time on which a new President of the Republic of South Africa will be elected. With kind regards, I've signed Mohoen Mohoen, Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa. That then confirms that there is indeed a vacancy as envisaged by the Constitution, that the existence of the vacancy was communicated to me, and that in response and in compliance with Section 86, I determine the date and the time at which that is to be done. The election of the president is to be done. I have to announce that uh, of course rules that will govern today's proceedings to be distributed to members of this house by placing copies on the seats and those are the rules contemplated by the Constitution in Schedule 3, Item 9. I also announce that I have appointed the following persons to be returning officers to assist me in these proceedings. Ms. P. N. Chawa as returning officer, and as assistant returning officers, Mr. M. Klaso, Dr. N. Ishmael, Mr. C. V. Matlangu, Ms. R. Mutlomi, Mr. M. Plakis, Ms. T. Lyons, Mr. J. M. Manyange, Mr. V. P. Galega, Mr. T. Nache, Mr. Tibello Malieme, Mr. F. J. Basson, Ms. A. A. Keston, Mr. P. Handik, Mr. G. Matakani, Mr. M. J. Toti, Ms. R. Tinder, Ms. N. Manjesi, and Ms. N. Mongo. They have taken the oath or affirmation of office before me.
a little while ago. The meeting will now proceed to the election of the President of the Republic of South Africa. Before I call for nominations, I have to remind members that in terms of the Constitution, each nomination must be submitted on the prescribed form and duly seconded. Furthermore, I have to draw the attention of members, especially to item four of part A of schedule three, to the Constitution in terms of which there may be no debate. There will now be an opportunity for the nomination of candidates for election as President of the Republic of South Africa. Are there nominations? Um, I, Dr. Patrick Marcella, on behalf of the ANC, nominate Honorable Acting President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa to be elected as the President of the Republic of South Africa, as stipulated in Section 86 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa Act number 108 of 1986. He is a tried and tested revolutionary who is bringing hope and expectation to our people as well as unity, renewal, and discipline to the movement. Africa and the world are pinning their hopes on your revolutionary leadership. I so move. The Honorable Ramaphosa has been nominated. Is the nomination seconded? Yes, Chief Justice. Chief Justice and members of the National Assembly, I, Joan Marie Louise Fubbs, wish to second the nomination proposed by Dr. Maisela that the Honorable Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa is the candidate of the ANC as president. Acting President Ramaphosa is a revolutionary cadre who has served the people of South Africa all his life as a student, activist, when studying law and a principled community leader and unionist. The presidency of Honorable Ramaphosa will deepen the commitment of the ANC to radical economic transformation and strengthen the unity, the unity in our country and try to restore our nationhood. We cannot transform our country, he believes, unless we transform ourselves. And like Oliver Tambo before him, Ramaphosa's leadership style will not simply be a matter of historical and academic matter. He is a product of deeply ingrained principles and values. But above all, above all, he is a selfless, disciplined leader. And he knows that he is here to serve the people of South Africa and bring about an inclusive and prosperous economy for all South Africans in which to benefit. I thank you. Oh, Honorable Acting President, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Is there another nomination? As the nomination form is being submitted to be checked, is there another nomination? Honorable Chief Justice. Yes, Honorable Mulder. I do not intend to make another nomination. I just want to bring the following to your attention. The nomination just made by Dr. Masiela was done in terms of an act that doesn't exist. He referred to 
Act 110 of 1986. The Constitution is 1996. So if it's a mistake, you must rectify that. If it's not, it's not in order. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Melder. The reason why the nomination form has to be submitted is so that we can satisfy ourselves that there is compliance. Any other nomination? Has the nomination form been submitted to the returning officer or not yet? Is there any other nomination? Yes, Honorable Lakota. Honorable Chief Justice, I arise not to make a nomination, but on behalf of the Congress of the People to raise an objection against the nominated candidate who has already been found by the Constitutional Court to have violated his oath of office, not once, but a multiple times, to draw attention of this House to this objection, because it is the intention of the Congress of the people to take the matter on review with the Constitutional Court because we because it is our understanding that anyone who's ever taken the oath of office and then broke it may no longer be allowed again to take that self same oath of office because there's no guarantee that that individual can be legitimate and be trusted to sustain that oath of office. I thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Lakota. I, I just want to make sure that nobody is left out. Is there any other nomination? Very well. There are no further nominations. Only one candidate has been nominated, namely the Honorable Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa. The nomination is in order. Accordingly, in terms of item five of part A of Schedule Three to the Constitution, I declare the Honorable Madame Ella Cyril Ramaphosa, duly elected President of the Republic of South Africa.
I'm trying to adapt to the environment I'm not used to in. <laughs> in a court of law, no singing is allowed. <laughs> Honorable Madam Mela Cyril Ramaphosa, congratulations on your election as the President of the Republic of South Africa. And I will now invite the speaker to take the seat. President Ramaphosa, the Chief Justice, Honorable Members, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, South Africa has just emerged from a historic and challenging time. In taking us forward, I wish to remind the House of the words of wisdom by former President Nelson Mandela when he said, and I quote, it is in the character of growth that we should learn from both pleasant and unpleasant experiences, unquote. A lesson that we should draw from these words as a nation is that our challenges are not insurmountable. The challenging events of the last few weeks and the subsequent resignation of former President Jacob Zuma brought to mind a similar moment a decade ago, if you remember, when former President Thabo Mbeki resigned as President of the Republic. With all of these, I however truly believe that our democracy has matured and remains resilient. <laughs> Honorable members, I take this opportunity to appreciate and commend the role and contribution made by former President Zuma over the last nine years. We wish former President Zuma and his family all the best in his future endeavors. <laughs> On the election of the new president, His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, we wish you strength and fortitude in this challenging role. I take this opportunity to extend a word of gratitude to the people of South Africa for their patience throughout this trying period. As we move forward, let us be reminded again of the words of Nelson Mandela, that indeed our challenges are not insurmountable. I thank you. <laughs> Having said that, honorable members, I think this is a moment for me to thank the Honorable Chief Justice for having conducted these proceedings, for having cooperated so quickly with us and uh, in fact assisting us to even have this election of a new president earlier than what we thought was possible. When we were interacting with him, we were very nervous about 
the question of his availability. We are really grateful, Chief Justice. I, honorable members, will now afford parties up to two minutes each to make remarks, and thereafter the president-elect will have an opportunity to address the House for a few minutes, not to really deliver the State of the Nation address. That's for tomorrow. Uh, may I check whether honorable members from the DA have something to say? The leader of the opposition. Fellow South Africans, uh, President Ramaphosa, I want to, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance, congratulate you, wish you well, and I want you to know that if you act in the interests of the people of South Africa, we will cooperate as best as we can to assist you in that mission. I do, honorable members, want to remind you that many people have asked the question, what has been the challenge of South Africa in the last nine years? It would be erroneous of me to say that the problem of South Africa has been, in fact, Jacob Zuma. You, sitting on this side, couldn't even tell him what he'd done wrong. And I want to remind you what he's done wrong. It's thanks to this opposition party that, in fact, we laid charges against him for corruption. We ensured that he accounted on Nkanda, which you removed. We moved motions of no confidence, which you voted in defense of. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a Jacob Zuma problem. We have an ANC problem. And I want to say this that this is a moment in our country where we must move Section 50 and go back to the people of South Africa and ask them for a fresh mandate so that we can bring a new beginning to South Africa, so that the people who are without work can find work, the hungry can find food, those who are without schooling can go to a decent school, and ultimately South Africa will belong to all black and white. Mr. Ramaphosa, I wish you strength, but no, we will hold you accountable, and I will see you in 2019 on the ballot box. Where is Pandame? Thank you very much. Uh, DA, where's Fandame? <laughs> where's Zane? Where's Zane? ANC, where's Zuma? <laughs> Please proceed, Honorable Steve. Where's Th Delhi? Th thank you very Order, much. Order, Honorable Minister. Where's Zane? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Honorable President and colleagues. The word recall has been used so often in the recent past that a certain airline decided to recall a flight this morning from Durban to Cape Town for apparently technical reasons. And the Honorable Butelezi and two of my colleagues are stranded in Durban and we tried as much to get them here by private charter because he would have liked to be here to personally congratulate you on your appointment, uh, Your Excellency. So I must apologize on his behalf and the, on behalf of others. We wholeheartedly support the nomination, uh, Mr. President. We realize that you have no magic wand to cure the ills of the past. But we trust that in the execution of your duties, you will do the right thing. You will get rid of the scourge of corruption. You will inspire hope in all South Africans and international investors. You will remove from your cabinet all those who are allegedly involved in state capture and incompetent ministers. You will appoint a head of the NPA sooner rather than later. You will visit state-owned enterprises and change boards and change leadership of state-owned enterprises to make them organs of development in our country. You will provide certainty, Honorable President, on free education at tertiary level. 
which was pronounced by the former president, address the scourge of crime and gangsterism, provide opportunities to all South Africans, irrespective of color, race, creed, or religion, mindful of the fact that major sections of our community have been disenfranchised and depressed in the past. We hope that you will deal with the land impasse as soon as possible. Having said this, as my time is uh, only five seconds, Honorable President, we'd like to remind you that this is not carte blanche support. We are giving you the benefit of the doubt. We are an opposition party. We will keep you and your cabinet and everybody on their toes to ensure that the 55 million people in South Africa get benefit out of this government. Congratulations on behalf of the IFP. Thank you. The NFP. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic, and uh, honorable members of the House. I'm bringing here, uh, Mr. President, uh, the congratulations from my leader, uh, the President of the NFP, Honorable Vizet Kamakwasa Msibi, and entire caucus and the party. You are taking office at a very crucial time in our country when the economy of the country is ailing. Just recently, Statistics were released and it was said that unemployment has gone down by only 1%. But 26% is not good enough. Uh, that shows that there's a lot that needs to be done. Over and above that, there are various social ease that even the civil, civil society has been speaking about. Not only us here as the opposition and everybody here has been talking about these ills, but they are evident for everyone to see. I believe that we are all aware that in each and every corner, South Africa was clamoring for what is good for the country. And uh, we hope, therefore, we'll build from there. I think we need to calculate a new spirit of patriotism, where all of us working together will be able to say we put the country first. Our people out there don't have an employment, they're hungry, they're poor, no roads, sanitation, everything. We have a lot of our youth who are unemployed. It is now time that we rally around one another and ensure that we build our country. And the issue of SOEs, state capture, corruption, these are the issues that we as the National Freedom Party will put forth, not just to argue and just to criticize for the sake of criticizing, but for the sake of nation building. We therefore, as a party, on behalf of uh, VZ Kamakwazam Sib, the president of the NFP, say to you, we wish you all the best but we'll be there to watch and do our oversight to say, let's forge ahead and take our country forward. Thank you very much. Congratulations. The UDM. Honorable Speaker, Honorable President, my SG, Honorable Members, Yagboni Shibobu Ifagile Pagutatumkuri. I was telling a city near Rongo, I performed the lap. Come so. Oh, okay. <laughs> the United Democratic Movement congratulates President eh, Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa. Mr. President, your abrupt rise to the highest office in the land is the collective effort and relentless struggles by the people of South Africa from all walks of life. Against the tyranny of the then ANC deployed corrupt leader. It is this, in this regard, I wish to acknowledge and congratulate the determination, selflessness and courageous decision and actions by opposition parties, citizens of South Africa notwithstanding the provocative and setbacks from the governing party through our collective actions you have brought the toxic leadership of mr zuma to ground indeed working together in collaboration as a nation on issues of national interest no one and especially no political party will ever think that it is bigger than the people of south africa let us take courage from this historic victory of the people and push forward the struggle against poverty, unemployment, inequality, and corruption. Accordingly, 
We remain convinced that as a nation we still need to converge under one roof to evaluate progress since 1994, identify stumbling blocks and collectively craft a common program which we can all be confident that it would guarantee a progressive society and a winning nation. The National Convention should, amongst others, focus on the find, finding solutions on our economic woes, the land question, lawlessness, and disregard of the rule of law. In view of your recent pronouncement, Mr. President, about the unity of the nation, I am tempted to believe that... Uh, thank you, Speaker. Honorable members, the newly elected President of the Republic of South Africa, on behalf of the African Christian Democratic Party, I want to join my colleagues in congratulating and also welcoming Honorable Ramaphosa as the newly elected President of South Africa. Mr. President, you are not only the President of the African National Congress, but you are also the President of the Republic of South Africa. All South Africans will be looking at you for leadership, for direction, for unity, and hopingly for implementation of policies that will ensure that South Africa becomes a prosperous country and the tainted image that our country had internationally is restored. And for us to be able to achieve that, I have a few proposals to make to you, Mr. President. Firstly, you need to look at the team around you because not one person can solve the problems of South Africa. You need to have a good team. What kind of team do you need? You need to put together a team of men and women of integrity. Men and women who believe that they need to be role models to people of South Africa. You need, besides that, the wisdom of God. You know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When there, when there, are, when there are people around you who act like they are only responsible to their constituencies, you should know better, because we come a long way together, that there is a God in heaven who watches over the affairs of men. So let the fear of God guide you, Mr. President. And lastly, I pray that you'll have the courage, the courage to do the right thing, even though it might be an unpopular thing. The courage to use a broom to sweep clean. There's a lot of corruption that we have complained about all these years. Now hope is dawning, and may the people who are hopeful out there not be disappointed by the Honorable Ramaphosa. My prayer for you, sir, is that the Lord will bless you, the Lord will give you courage, and the Lord will make you a man of principle who will not buy face. Even though the comrades may go and may say, let's go to the left, if you know the right way to go is the right, be willing to go alone, and the Lord will bless you. Thank you, sir. The AIC. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I'm going to be very, very short. That is why I didn't bring any paper with me here. I felt I should, I should, I felt I should come here and congratulate uh, my former counterpart because. He was the deputy president of ANC, as or the deputy president of AIC. <laughs> uh, I think, Mr. President, I think you are equal to the task. We hope that you have learned, learned a lot from the bad things that have been happening here. So you sh this should not be repeated. Together, and I will be fighting all these challenges that are facing the country. We know that our country is being faced by so many challenges. 
Of course, we've got to support you as other parties, because being alone now, you cannot win. So it means we've got to come together. Then we fight all these challenges. So you carry on, be good. So we wish you well in all what you're going to do for the country, not for yourself or for ANC, but for the country as a whole. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mbinda. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, uh, honorable members, on behalf of the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania, uh, we wish to congratulate you uh, as you are elected as the President of South Africa uh, during this month of uh, the defier of the undefiable Robert Magaliso Sobuk, as he will be uh, 40 years uh, ever since his death. But what we, the message that we want to leave as the PAC uh, is to remind you that it is not yet Uhuru. Uh, the struggle must still continue. Our people are still living in bondage. Uh, they are looking at, at us, up at us as the leaders uh, in this society. Uh, more especially the former liberation movements. And uh, you need to think seriously, more especially about the issue of changing uh, this section 25 of the Constitution so that it is in favor of the African people, not to those that have stolen uh, our land and wealth. The ANC. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, President of the Republic of South Africa, Sir Ramaphos. We, we, we are honored as the African National Congress to have been supported by all parties in this House in electing Comrade Cyril Ramaphosa as President of the Republic. We are very honored and we would like to thank all the parties indeed because except those who decided to go away, uh, we'd like to thank all of you for agreeing with the ANC that in this member of parliament and leader, in this president of the African National Congress, Comrade Sir Ramaphosa, we have a leader who in his DNA will at all times and has at all times been of service to our people. That is the leader that we have. And we know, Comrade Cyril, from your student days, from the days when you established and founded the National Union of Mine Workers, from the days when you were part of us in the trenches, in the UDF and the MDM formations, from the days when we fought for the unbending of the African National Congress, you were there. Indeed, when the African National Congress was unbanned in 1991, you were there to become a Secretary General of the African National Congress. So you have been there. You have been in the struggle to change the lives of our people for the better. You are now at the helm, Comrade Cyril. And this movement has deliberately put you at the helm because we believe at this stage of our struggle, 
you will be able to assist all of us, particularly the ANC, to ensure that our people have a better life. That's why the 54th Conference of the ANC elected you president. Elected you president. And the, this membership of the ANC deployed here, informed by the national leadership of the ANC, elected you today president of the Republic of South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Comrade President Siabuler. Uh, at this point, honorable members, it is my honor to invite the honorable president-elect to address the house. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pass off. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Chief Justice, Mohueng Mohueng, I'd like to thank everyone for and you especially, Madam Speaker, for giving me this brief opportunity. When I walked in, I <clears throat> had occasion to go past where the Chief Justice was robing himself. And as he emerged, I saw him fully robed up with uh, having taken off his tie and uh, suit jacket, I looked at him and I said, Chief Justice, when this position of Chief Justice came up, I said I'd like it to pass me by because of the robing. <laughs> it's a position that I could have opted for, but because of this robing business, I thought, no, I'm not quite interested in it. But we had a bit of a conversation and, and in the end I said, well, I seem to have taken on a much more difficult task and the Chief Justice laughed at me. So Chief Justice, it's a real pleasure to have you here and thank you very much for having changed your program. I'd like to thank all the members of this assembly. I thank you for the honor that you bestow on me by electing me to this position. I truly feel humbled to have been given this great privilege of being able to serve our people. I also want to extend my gratitude to the leaders of political parties who are here, as well as the media, this, for me, is a truly humbling occasion. Soon, once I'm sworn in, I will no longer be a member of this House. I will miss being a member, but that does not bring this collegiate feeling that I have with all members here, because I will be coming to this House on a regular basis to exercise my accountability as President of the Republic to answer your questions and to interact with you and a range of matters that affect the lives of our people. One of the things that I will be seeking to do is to have an opportunity which I started doing when I was appointed Deputy President. I will seek to work with all political parties and will start it off, will start it off with wanting to have a meeting 
with the leaders of all political parties so that we can try and find a way of working together. And I'm heartened by some of the sentiments expressed here about working together, which I will want to touch on. And I will do all this as a servant of our people, because I do believe that when one is elected in this type of position, you basically become a servant of the people of South Africa. And I'll seek to execute that task with humility, with faithfulness, and with dignity as well. That is what I will seek to do. And I'd like to thank all the parties that have spoken. This is not a moment for me to speak because that moment will be accorded to me tomorrow, I believe. But listening to all the parties who have expressed a whole lot of uh, sentiments here, it is almost like in our culture, uh, when a young man come, becomes a man, you are given uh, almost instructions. So what all of you have been saying here, it's almost like saying to me, we are offering you advice, we are offering you suggestions, uh, some have even uh, offered some threats. Uh, honorable, before I get to that, and many of you have spoken about unity, You've spoken about patriotism. You've spoken largely about how we can all work together to improve the lives of our people. That has a great deal of resonance with I believe in and what I intend to do. Now, very briefly, and just responding to some of the good wishes, some of the advice that I've received, Honorable Maimani uh, ends his wonderful words and almost soils them by saying, I'm going to see you in 2019. <laughs> now, I think he's running ahead of himself. <clears throat> he's running ahead of himself because, Honorable Maimani, I'm going to be seeing you regularly here in this house <laughs> on an ongoing basis. So leave 2019 uh, aside, let us deal with the current moment and work together on how we are going to improve the lives of our people rather than grandstanding, rather than standing on big platform. That's all I want to say. Honorable Singh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, 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 Honorable uh, Butelezi is not here, uh, that his plane was recalled uh, back to, to Durban. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I would have I loved to, to receive the good wishes from him as well. The issues that you have raised, issues that have to do with corruption, issues of how we can straighten out our state-owned enterprises, and how we deal with state capture uh, is are issues that are on our radar screen. Those are issues that we're going to be addressing, and tomorrow we will also have an opportunity to outline some of the steps that we are going to be taking. Honorable Kubisa, uh, I thank you uh, because you went to the heart of the matter by talking about patriotism and how we can work together to put our country first. That is precisely what I, as President of the Republic, would want to do. South Africa must come first in everything that we all do. <laughs> General Olomisa, 
who continues to call me his Secretary General because when he was a member of the African National Congress, we called each other with wonderful endearments and I said General to him, he continues to say Secretary General and I accept that. And I agree with you that we should find ways of working together on issues, as you said correctly, of national interest. And when the Avuma, General Wam Saukainyam, Zagbe, Zagotis, Aukainyam, and that already is a good sign of demonstrating that across party lines, we should have an opportunity of sitting together and eating meat. And I would like to take you up on that. Zaukainyam, and now. Honorable Khunewald, yes, I want to join you in saying that it would be wonderful if the level of debate in this House can be raised to a level where we really begin to engage on national issues without screaming at each other, without, you know, uh, words like a point of order on an ongoing basis and the disorder that has often defined what happens in this house. I will, yes, I will want us to rise to that level. And also, and I agree that you would want a president who will respect not only this house, but the members of this house. I join you completely on that. But I think the flip side of that coin also says that we should respect one another. But in respecting one another, it means that we are respecting this house that our people set up. It means that we will be respecting our people. So I would say that let's underpin everything that we do here through a great sign of respect to our people because when our people look at this parliament, they see themselves represented and they don't want to see disorder they don't want to see poor levels of debate. They want to see debates that are going to lead to the improvement of their lives. Let us rise to that occasion. <laughs> Reverend Meshwe, Reverend Meshwe and I share a history together. And maybe it's important that we should both confess now. <laughs> we were at university together and uh, we both belong to the student Christian movement. Uh, the difference was or is that I was his leader uh, when we were members of the student Christian movement and he followed me. And so it's wonderful that we are both uh, in this parliament uh, representing our people. Yes, Reverend Mishwe, we will pay heed to the advice that you're giving, that we should choose a great team, that's precisely what our people deserve, to have a team that will work for their interest, in their interests. Yes, and also that all of us, it does not only behove on the president, but all of us should be able to work and lead our people with great courage and that is precisely what we will seek to do. Deputy President of the I AIC, yes, you and I uh, were both deputy presidents of our organization. I'm sorry that you've uh, lagged behind a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'd like to welcome your very kind words, your words where you say uh, you will support the work that I will be doing and that uh, you will give as much uh, support to what we will all be doing collectively. So I thank you for that, my dearest DP. Uh, thank you very much. To the leader of the PAC, yes, this is not yet Uhuru. We've never thought that this was Uhuru. What we've always said is that we are going to seek to improve the lives of our people on an ongoing basis. And since 1994, 
we've done precisely that. The lives of our people have been improving on an ongoing basis, and the commitment that you will find on this side, which commitment I would like you also to be part of, is that all of us should continue improve the lives of our people and take their lives to a higher level. I'd like to end by thanking my comrade Jackson Mtembu for your most wonderful words. I thank you and uh, I'm here as a result of the support that I've received from my organization, the African National Congress. the African National Congress, which continues to lead the national democratic revolution in our country to bring about change is what has put many of us here in this house. And our intent is to continue, indeed, to improve the lives of our people. And ladies and gentlemen, members of this house, uh, Madam Speaker and Chief Justice, that is what I would like to say at this moment and thank you all for this great opportunity that I've been given and I will try to work very hard not to disappoint the people of South Africa. Thank you very much. Point of order, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. That concludes the proceedings. The House is adjourned.